Hello. In this video, we are going to model the face centered cubic FCC 100 Miller plane. Recall that if we have an extended lattice of exactly one element, such that the atoms are at the vertices of a cube, then we have the simple cubic structure. Now, to make a new structure, let us add another atom of exactly the same type at the center of each face. First, for example, we can put it in the center of the top face of the cube, where it would go there, and we also need to put one at the center of the bottom face of the cube. We also need such atoms at the center of the left face and the right face. So here is at the center of the left face of the cube, and here is at the center of the right face of the cube. We also need atoms at the center of the front and rear face of the cube. So if this is the center of the face of the front cube, which is a little hard to see, but imagine we have this front face and we put an atom exactly at the center and we put an atom at the center of the rear face. So now we have an atom at the center of each and every face of the cube as well as at the vertices and these are all of exactly the same element. For the face centered cubic structure, there is only one unique parameter, and that is the edge length A for the cube. Since we know that all the lengths of the cube are going to be A, and all the bond angles, all the angles of the cube, are going to be 90 degrees. If we cut through the crystal parallel, for example, to the top face here, parallel to the top square here, we get the 100 face of the crystal, and we notice that we have a square structure in the sense that we have a square and the both the height and the width are a distance A, so that we have a square here. Now what's different here is we have a square in the sense that we have atoms at the vertices, and the distances between these atoms are all identical, and the bond angles are 90 degrees. But it is in a primitive cell. We notice that for this particular cell, we have an atom in the center, so here we have a square cell, but a centered square cell. This particular plane uh, can be easily modeled using Lego because of the square fourfold symmetry. So for the edge length A, we use a distance of four studs for the uh, width and a distance of four for the height. And this works out very conveniently so that we can find the coordinates of the central face atom, so to speak, this one in the center, simply by going over two units and coming down two units. So if these are separated by four studs, then this will be separated from this line by a distance of two studs. If we continue this lattice, we also would have additional lattice points here, 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 and here, which we add to show the following thing, in a sense that if we change our orientation and now look in this direction, we can define a new unit cell that is a square. And it has fourfold rotational symmetry, but now, since we defined it in this particular direction, we have a newly defined unit cell. Now we have a cell that is a primitive unit cell. So here we have units, uh, we have uh, lattice points at the vertices, but no lattice points in the center, which makes this a primitive unit cell. And we would notice that the dimensions of this particular unit cell now are not going to be A anymore because A was the distance from here to here. So you would see that this is the distance 
the square root of 2 over 2 times a. So now we've defined it a new unit cell, but this also has fourfold rotational symmetry. Here we have figure 7, pattern 7, overlaid the FCC100 structure. And here we see the dimensions of the unit cell. So defined this way, the edge length is A. The distance across the diagonal, so from here to this particular atom, is going to be the square root of 2 times A. And again, we see in this direction that the displacement, the edge length, is also A therefore giving us a square, a fourfold uh, structure to the unit cell. We see that there is a atom at each of the corners, the vertices of the square, but also there is an additional one right in the center. So therefore we have a centered cell and not a primitive cell. We now overlay pattern E over exactly the same lattice we had before, exactly the same arrangement of the FCC100 atoms, but now we redefine the unit cell to be a primitive square. So using these particular dimensions, so we've taken exactly the same atoms, we've just reconnected them by drawing on this piece of paper. And we show now that the distance of the square from one atom to the next in the newly defined unit cell is the square root of 2 over 2 times A. And now we have a primitive cell and not a centered cell, even though we have an identical lattice as before, showing us that whether we have a primitive or a centered cell very often depends on how we choose to define our coordinate system. The FCC100 plane has another additional interesting feature, which is that at all of the fourfold hollow locations, so if we take any square arrangement of lattice points that look exactly the center, there is another lattice point of exactly the same element, but not at the same level of these. So this is actually below the level of these particular atoms. So the clear circles, where we actually have the gold colored studs uh, protruding for the Lego uh, bricks that are denoting the atoms of the metal lattice, we also have a second level, which is lower, which we haven't shown. This is shaded here, which is the same element as here, but it is at a lower level. So this is actually in a hollow. It's a lower level than we have here. We notice that modeled this way, that we have the exposed FCC100 plane uh, denoted here, but we haven't represented yet the lower level, so the second level of the same atom that we have here, but at a lower level. Here we've taken a two by two section, and all we've done so far in the first step is simply to pile the one by one bricks on top of each other. So now that we have each of these locations uh, of the exposed FCC100 face, are now two bricks tall rather than one brick tall. And here we can see the same lattice again, here with two bricks piled on top of each other as opposed to just one. We can now place the metal atoms that are at the next lowest level to the surface by using just a single brick here. So we have modeled the hollow using just a single height of brick.
So this gives an even more realistic uh, representation of the surface structure showing the exposed uh, metal atoms and the metal atoms of the fourfold hollow in the FCC100 plane. To make the surface structure easier to see, let's adsorb some carbon monoxide molecules and let's put them at the on top site. So now we have the carbon monoxide molecules adsorbed at the on top positions and not at the fourfold hollows. Thank you very much for your attention. Have a good one.